These are weekends that really demonstrate where we are and where we need to improve. And they'll accelerate the process given by none of us want to ever be in this situation ever again. We're here to field two competitive cars across a weekend and allow our drivers to fight to the absolute maximum. And not just did we obviously compromise ourselves this weekend and only have the ability to run one car, but further to that, we lost all the ability to run on Friday sensibly and the compromise was in the race, I don't think we got it right. I don't think we had the setup in the right place or the car in the right place. And the compromise from that is a lack of scoring points relative to our competitors that were able to walk away with a good handful. These moments remain in your mind for a long time because they hurt. And it's that pain that drives you on day by day to ensure that you don't go back into that space. So it's not a weekend to forget, it's one to remember. Welcome to The Val's Verdict, presented by Kraken. I make decisions based on facts and data, and those same facts and data I've presented to everyone else as well. The, the simple element of our sport now is there's only points scored in the top 10 positions. The bottom teams, the bottom five teams, we're just separated and we will be until the end of the year by a matter of points. And you have to, in these circumstances, put your best foot forward. And thus far, focusing just on 2024, that's been Alex. The gap's much closer, but Alex has been just ahead. And whilst it was a hard decision, by, by far the hardest I've had since I've been in the sport, let alone as a, a TP, it was still the correct decision to put your best foot forward in that circumstance. And how I cope with it is making sure that there's a grounding. And for me, that's, that's effectively the science behind the decision we've made. It's not based on feel, it's based on just simply data. The other way of coping with it is making sure that the team pulls together after a decision like this, including the drivers, not push away. And I think you saw that from Logan. He had maturities well and truly beyond what I had at his age. He was back in the garage the next day helping Alex get up to speed. He was in the strategy meeting on Sunday morning explaining what he felt on the FP2 long run and how to get over certain tyre issues that we were facing. That's the role of someone that is very much a part of a team, something bigger than themselves, the same way I am as well. And it was incredible to see just the maturity that he had in that circumstance. Same for Alex, the amount of pressure on his shoulders was enormous. He didn't really do any running on Friday. Went into Saturday morning in completely different conditions and then qualifying was the first time he got into representative conditions and you saw that with his runs getting better and better. That's an enormous amount of pressure for any elite athlete and he dealt with it in spades. Both sides of the garage, both engineering and also mechanics work together to produce one car and get the most out of it that we could do. That's how I cope with it. I look at the behaviors of everyone in the highest stress you can ever position a team to be in and see how we perform. And I'm proud of how we pull together. I think it's a fair comment, it's a disaster. We're in an elite sport at the leading edge of what I think is the pinnacle of motorsport and yet we fielded one car. And that's not a situation we plan to be in or want to be in, and nor do any team for that matter. You effectively deal with it. It's not too dissimilar to what I've just described, but it's fundamentally use this as a positive, not as a negative. I already knew the case was there. The difference now is the whole world has seen where we are really in reality and how far behind we are and what work we have to do to move forward. It's a catalyst to change. We are adapting and transforming the background. And part of the reason why we're delayed is we are adding processes and transformation to the organization whilst asking ourselves to do three cars, not one car, and a far more complex technology package than we've ever done before. It's stressed the organization to the absolute limit. And part of the outcome of that is what you see. We haven't got a third chassis yet. It's on its way, but it's not available yet. The positives of all of these though, is it shows why we have to continue changing and adapting and moving forward in the way we do. This performance gain that we've had across the last year is great, but it can't come at the cost of other items that are just bread and butter. And these circumstances that you see will make teams stronger as long as you create the right environment and that's my job to do so. I'm confident we'll be able to fix the chassis. We put measures in place to make sure the chassis was back here very early on Monday morning. I think it arrived around 2 a.m. or so. And since then, there was already crews inside the building working on that, stripping it down and doing repairs. And just on update today is we're in a good place for having the, the chassis back early enough 
for Suzuka. So to answer your question, a lot of the work's done actually back in Melbourne. There was photographs and techniques called NDT, which is non-destructive testing. So there's various ones you can do there, but it allows us to fully understand how big the damage is and what we have to do. And that preparation was key. What it meant was already at 2 a.m. on Monday, work could start. It wasn't then a reflection on what was happening. It was more, this is what we're doing and this is how we execute it. So in Suzuka, we'll have two cars without too many issues. We won't have a spare chassis in Japan. The original plan before the season started was to have three chassis, as you would expect, at round one. And that gently slipped towards round three as items became more and more delayed. And since then, and especially with the work that we're doing now on chassis number two, there is again going to be a small amount of delay. That said, we will have a chassis soon. In terms of how much work it is, as you can probably gather by the fact of it's not available to us now, it is weeks and weeks of work. It is thousands of hours spent in composites in order to get it ready. It's, it's one of the biggest jobs within an F1 team. And you've got to get it right. Even when it's built, it then has to have a number of items completed to it, including machining to get it in exactly the right state so it's ready for racing. It will be with us soon. In the meantime, we have to deal with the circumstances we have in front of us. It's a good question. It's very difficult for any elite athlete when you've asked them to step down from what they do and what they've trained for near enough every day of their life. In the case of Logan, we've already spoken several times both afterwards and we continue to do so this week and next week. It's really important to maintain that close contact. It's really important he also understands that it's not a reflection of what he's been doing so far. He's on the trajectory where he is closing in to Alex in terms of performance, but he wasn't on the leading edge. He wasn't leading Alex forward. He was just, just behind him. If you look at Saudi, you'll see the race result where he finished just behind him in that circumstance. In terms of Bahrain, that was our fault in terms of the steering wheel, but his pace afterwards was matching Alex. So circumstances haven't really come his way, but it's not taking all of that away from him, but rather wanting to build with him going forward. I'm confident that speaking to him a day ago, he's got the right mindset towards things. He wants to come back and show the world that he's deserving of being here, that he is a Formula One driver at an elite level. And in terms of Suzuka, he had pace there last year. Obviously, there was a large, large crash, but he had performance. And that's the real key thing behind it. It's demonstrating that to the world in a clean way. The, the biggest takeaway is, is not a positive, it's a negative. Across the first two races, we were either the fastest team or there or thereabouts with RB and um, has and yet here we weren't we were way off the pace it was surprising in fact how slow we were at different points in the race and a lot of that's a reflection of the fact that we didn't long run the medium on Friday obviously Alex's cars was in bits and in the case of Logan he accidentally flat spotted that medium tire which just meant we were without data and what it meant in the race is we suffered a lot more with what's called front right graining so effectively you look at the front right you'll see that darkened patch where it's just tearing apart and also rear overheating now everyone I think had overheating to a certain extent but we were definitely on the worst side and that front left graining and that learning was what was missing from Friday so the biggest takeaway for me out of this is making sure that every lap counts because it does in the grand scheme of things and we've got to make sure we get our learning completed on Friday to put ourselves in the right position because without that in such a close midfield every millisecond is really making a difference. The second learning is there is plenty of point scoring opportunity for all of us, but the circumstances won't come every race. But when they do, we have to be on the leading edge of all of those teams, and we won't this weekend. There's no doubt an accident like the one Alex had in Melbourne will cost you. It's an amount of time that we hadn't expected to be working on an item, in this case, on the chassis, and it takes workload out of the system. The upgrades that we had in the pipeline for Japan will still appear, so that's the positive news out of all things. They're small items, but every single one will contribute towards the bigger performance picture. There might be items down the line that are slightly impacted, but the team at the moment is doing a really good job of trying to absorb the additional workload without impacting on the down the line upgrades. So there'll be items appearing round about round six or so and a few other items beyond there as well. And we've just got to keep focus on chipping away at the performance deficit that we have and moving forward up the grid.